It seems like every year the North Dakota Game and Fish finds another unit with chronic wasting disease. And in an effort to stop that, they've added some regulations. One of which is no transportation of brain or spinal tissue across unit lines. What that does is it makes it really difficult for people, particularly out in the Badlands, to get home their antlers and skull, well, without breaking some rules. So today I'm gonna to show you how to European mount this beautiful white-tailed deer. So to get started, the first thing I need to do is get all this skin off of the head. One of the best ways I've seen to do this is just start at the lips and then just kind of work your way up, peel everything back. I always try to be as careful as I can to not gouge the bone, obviously. There's a piece of cartilage right here, kind of where the nose meets, that's going to come out anyways, so I don't mind cutting that. Then I just run the knife right along the bone, get underneath the eye. When I get to the eye, just skin around the eye. I like to do this if I can, like right away. So the skin doesn't have time to like really get stuck on, but this deer wasn't mine. So we're making do with what we can here. Cause right on the top, especially right on the nose, it gets really sticky. Like it, like it becomes part of that bone. I'm going to add this to uh, reason number 675 that I should live in the country. <laughs> People driving by and looking at me like I'm a crazy person. I'm going to skin the bottom jaw, but not be too terribly careful. Because, well, I'm taking it off anyways. Okay, we'll catch back up when this is all done. All right, so I got most of everything off of this thing. Um, notice that there's still a lot of like fur around the pedicles, and there's quite a bit of meat on the face. Eyeballs are still in, brain's still in. I do this a little different than a lot of people, okay? So there's lots of guys that'll go in and just completely take as much stuff off of, uh, off of the head as they can before they put it in the water for the first time. Personally, for me, I don't ever actually like boil the head. I simmer it kind of like if you think of cooking a pot roast or like, like say a shoulder blade roast for a long, long time, really low, real slow. The bone stays in good shape, but all the meat falls off. That's what I'm going to do with this guy. So right now I'm going to go take, well, I either have a turkey boiler or like a basin. Uh, I'll see which one works best for this. We're gonna put Dawn dish soap in borax. I'm gonna get it up to a boil. I'm gonna reduce it down to a, like a low simmer. Then we're gonna put the head in. And we're gonna let that go for a good portion of tonight, say for the next two, three hours. Okay, so it's been going for a couple of hours. Obviously it got dark out here. I've got this pick set. It's usually what I use to just take it out for the first time, take majority of like all the meat and any excess hair, and cartilage and stuff. We'll take that all out. Then we'll get more soap and more borax in the water and we'll keep kind of boiling it off, just doing it layer by layer until we get it nice and clean.
Okay, so last night it got pretty late, so I decided to pull this out of the water. Um, kind of got cold, dry, so um, what I'm going to do is take a knife and use a pliers and a pick, and I'm going to take all the meat that I can get off of the outside of it. Then we're going to change the water out, put all new soap, all new borax, and give it another soak. Okay, I'm gonna dump out the water, put new water in, and then it'll be time for uh, soak number two. Okay, so now we've got most of this bad boy boiled off. There's a, a few things that need to come off now, but we're gonna use this little pick Let's see if I can show it to this camera. I'm going to use this little pick here to scrape a lot of that out. One thing that I like to be careful of though is with these nasal bones, while it's still warm, to not really put too much pressure on them because they get a little wiggly. I mean, you can always go back in there and super glue it, but that's not the it's not the point of this video, so we're gonna try to not have to do that. First thing I'm gonna try to do is get this cartilage out. Yeah, buddy. That really helps. Now, I'm just going to do my best uh, dentist impression here. Get all this, get all this fatty tissue off the bone. I know a lot of people use a pressure washer, but let's be honest, if you're out in the Badlands, tucked away somewhere, you probably don't have a pressure washer. And in reality, you don't have to clean it up like as well as we're gonna clean it up. All you gotta do is get the eyes and brains and stuff out. And so what I like to do is I keep an arrow and I just go up through this frame and back here, like this hole, you can just kind of like mash potatoes the brain, which I get it. It's gross. You're going to want to either wash that arrow or get rid of it because, well, that's where all the CWD lives. If you're out there, I'd maybe even use gloves. Even though right now there is zero cases in which chronic wasting disease has been spread to a human, I don't want to be number one. So we're just going in here, getting all the gross stuff out. I believe in the barbecue world, they call this fall off the bone tender. And in my wife's kitchen world, they call this get the heck out of my house when you're doing this, which is why I'm in the driveway. Because I boiled the head in the house one time, and apparently that is now off limits. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why. The good thing is, is the water in my pot is very, very, very clean still. So once I get all of the meat and fat off, I can give it one more just little, little bath to pull off any of the stuff that I newly exposed and let that soap draw that fat out. You know, in hindsight, I can see why she wouldn't want me doing this in the house. Okay, we are very, very, very close. One last soak for just a little while to let the soap get in there to all that new fatty tissue that I pulled out. And then she'll be ready to dry and peroxide. Okay, so if the only thing you care about is being able to transport this guy here is done. Okay, like there's some cleanup stuff that I'm gonna do because I'm going to actually bleach this thing and turn it into a nice European mount for the person who shot it. But when you go in there and smush up the brains, I know that's kind of gross, but when you go up and smush it up, before you put it in the boiler, the soap kind of makes an emulsion and then it takes that brain out. 
So compartment is just absolutely clear. There is no nervous tissue at all left in this thing. And so now what I'm gonna do, go inside and wash it off. Let it, uh, I'm gonna let it dry so that I can go in with my picks and just pick the last little bit of meat and gristle and whatever I can find. And then we're gonna bleach it. It's looking good so far. Okay, so now this is pretty much done to most people's specifications. Um, inside of the nasal is actually really good. Everything is nice and clean. I just have a couple pieces on the bottom. You can see there that need some TLC. I'm gonna go in there with the scraper and just clean that all up. And then we're gonna get the uh, peroxide. So we are done with the make it legal. Now we are into the make it pretty. Okay, well, we've got the whole back cleaned up, all the meats out of the little foramens and all the little holes. I'm just gonna hit everything with some Dawn dish soap one last time, wash it off, and then we're going to hit the rest of this thing with some peroxide. Yeah, this is okay, so since I'm going to be using a paintbrush to put the peroxide on the skull, I'm not really gonna worry about using stuff like Saran Wrap or anything. Um, I'll just be extra cautious with the brush. We're gonna use 40 volume peroxide. I got this from Amazon, I think, but you can get it at like uh, salons and stuff like that if they'll sell it. I've got this left over from last year, so we're gonna use it. Paintbrush. So after a night in the peroxide, this is what she looks like. Pretty good. Like, real good. So now, what I like to do just to kind of protect it a little bit is I use something called Mod Podge. And I use a, like a matte finish. And I just go over everything just to kind of seal it up. So we're going to do that. And then uh, let that dry overnight. And she'll be done. He'll, he'll be done. All right, that's done. We're gonna let it dry overnight and we will see the finished product tomorrow. All right guys, so here is the finished product. We'll do some close-ups just so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, one more time, I mean, all you had to do to make this thing legal was boil out any like nervous system tissue. But I wanted to take it a step farther, so if she wanted to put it on the wall, she could. So overall, I think it turned out pretty great. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got some value out of the video. If you did, please do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, all those things really help us grow the channel. Until next time, you guys keep living your North Prairie life.